previous video, we talked about data types in Java, and we said that there are four data types that hold whole numbers, in other words, numbers without a decimal. There are also two data types that hold uh, what we call floating point because they hold decimal numbers. Now, what happens if we take a floating point number and we try to save it into a whole number? We're going to lose some information. We're going to lose everything after the decimal point because we, we essentially truncate everything after the decimal point. Because we're losing information, we have to cast. And casting is just kind of like us signing a contract, acknowledging that we're going to lose some information. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about casting. We'll see casting in much more detail later when we take a look at objects and inheritance, subclasses, superclasses. We'll save that for a later lecture, though. This lecture is going to say, uh, help us with our next programming assignment, which is programming assignment number two, which is where we actually convert Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, and uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. So you see that if we have a Fahrenheit value, Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 divided by 9 will give us the Celsius equivalent. Let's take a look at how casting works in Java. So I'm going to start with a simple program, and I'm going to say double, and we'll say red equals, and we'll just make some number like 314159, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to say int barn equals zero, so a simple initialization, and then we're going to say barn equals red, and then I'm going to say system out print line barn, and we'll say plus barn plus red, and then we'll say plus red like so. Now notice that line number 23 gives me a red line. An important rule in programming is when you see a red line, stop what you're doing and fix it immediately. Don't keep working. There's a concept in programming called technical debt. Technical debt means you have something that's not quality, something that is incomplete. If you continue to build on it, you continue to invest in it, then you're investing in something that's broken essentially, kind of like throwing good money after bad. So when you see a red line stop immediately and fix it, one of the benefits of modern development environments like NetBeans and Eclipse and IntelliJ is that they compile as you're writing your program. It used to be you had to physically choose to compile, but now they'll compile while you're writing the program, and that's how they can come up with these red lines. Now if you see a red line, the first thing to do is to mouse over the red line and see what's wrong. And it says, incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from double to int. That means that we have a risk there that we're going to lose information that follows the decimal point. Now, the important part is, notice what's under the four dashes, Alt, Enter, to show hints. So let me hold Alt and hit Enter, and notice that a hint comes up that says cast. Okay, let's choose it. And you see what's happened here is we've now casted red uh, to an int from a double. That's where I say we're signing a contract that says, I realize I'm going to lose some information here, specifically the 14159. I'm aware of that, and I'm willing to take that risk. Uh, the program isn't essentially different from before we did the cast. We've just acknowledged here that we're doing a cast, and this is a good time for us to pause and think about this and wonder, do we really need to do this? Should barn be a double as well, or should red be an int and not have the decimal part? It, it gives us a moment to think about if we're doing it the right way or not. Let's go ahead and run the program, and we'll see that barn is 3, red is 34159. So you see, sure enough, barn has dropped off everything that's after the decimal. Okay, now with that being said, let me go back to our assignment 2. And assignment two has the conversion of Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now, I happen to know that 40 degrees Fahrenheit is about 4.4 degrees Celsius. So let me put in that equation, uh, but I'm going to do it from hand. I'm going to do it by hand here. I'm going to say int uh, Celsius equals, uh, I'm just going to, well, I'll tell you what, let me do it in two different lines. I'm going to say int Fahrenheit equals 40, 40 degrees, int Celsius equals 40, let's go back to that equation, 40 minus 32 times 5 over 9. So 40 minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. 
Now, first of all, we have an issue here. One is we're doing multiple mathematical steps all at once. Uh, and again, my recommendation is, if possible, break those into different lines, because if you don't remember the order of operations, you might not end up with the result that you want. If I were to run this as it were, and I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and run it. Okay, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. Okay, Celsius, Celsius. We're going to find out that we do not get a value of 4.4 Celsius for 40 degrees Fahrenheit because of the order of operations. Subtraction has the lowest priority. Uh, after that, division and multiplication are roughly equal, and it's going to work left to right. So this would say 32 times 5 minus 9. I'm sorry, 32 times 5 divided by 9. Then it's going to take that quantity and subtract 40 from it, or it's going to subtract that quantity from 40 properly. Uh, that is not what our equation is. Our equation specifically says subtract 32 from Fahrenheit, then take that result and multiply it by 5 over 9. Uh, without using the parentheses, we're not going to get the value that we want. Let's see what value we do get. Okay, we get Fahrenheit 40, Celsius 23. Uh, 23 Celsius is around 72 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so that's definitely not right. It's not... It's not too far out of the ballpark, but it's not right either. So let's try again. I'm going to say 40 minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. Uh, let's see what happens here. So what I'm doing with the parentheses is I'm changing the order of operations. I'm saying subtract 32 from 40 first, which is going to give us 8. Uh, then 8 times 5 divided by 9 is going to give us about 4.4, uh, but we are storing this in an end, so it's going to give us a whole number uh, probably 4. Let's see what we get now. Sure enough, we see Fahrenheit 40, Celsius 4. Now there's one other thing that can get a little bit interesting here. Uh, we know that multiplication and division are roughly equal in the order of operations. What if, just for S and G's, what if I put the 5 over 9 in parentheses, which tells that to go first. Uh, actually, the 40 minus 32 will still go first then the 5 over 9 will go next, and then we're going to multiply uh, the operand on the left with the operand on the right. What happens now? We get a very different answer, which is very strange. Fahrenheit is 40, Celsius is 0. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, I just noticed something. I meant to put the variable Fahrenheit here. It's going to give us the same results anyway, but uh, it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit easier to read because we see we're declaring Fahrenheit up above. So let me run this again. Uh, again, going to be the same answer, Fahrenheit 40, Celsius 0. Okay, maybe I need to make Fahrenheit 4,000. What is 4,000 Fahrenheit and Celsius? Again, Fahrenheit 4,000, Celsius 0. Something very curious is happening here, and here's what it is. These are literal numbers, 5 and 9. By literal, I mean they're not assigned to a variable. Because I do not have a decimal, Java assumes that these are ints. And with Java, if we divide an int by an int, and just look at what I'm highlighting here. Don't look at the rest. Just look at this highlight. If we divide an int by an int, Java knows that the result should also be an int. Now, what is 5 divided by 9? Let's find out. 5 divided by 9 is 0 0.55555, but wait a minute. We said the result is going to be an int, right? And an int cannot have a decimal value. It's a whole number. So it's going to truncate anything that follows that decimal. So uh, that's going to give us 0. Okay. So the highlighted area will be 0. 0 times anything is 0. So it's a little subtle nuance here, but it is one that we want to be aware of. If we divide an int by an int, we're going to get an int in return. It's going to truncate everything off the decimal, which might not give us the result that we want. So there are two ways that we can handle this. One is, in our case, it's very easy. We don't, the, the multiplication division order of operations doesn't matter, so we can go ahead and take away those parens. But that's unique to our case. Another case might not be the same way. Uh, another way to fix it is simply to change the data type. And again, this is what we're going to call an 
this is what we're going to call a, um, there we go, like so, 5.0 over 9.0. This is what we're going to call a literal, because we're not assigning 5 over 9 to a variable. Uh, we're just literally putting them into the equation. When I put 5.0 divided by 9.0, it's no longer an int divided by an int. It's now a double divided by a double, and it wants to return a double. Now, one interesting thing is notice, even though this is a legal equation, I now have a red line. And what does the red line say? This might look a little bit familiar. Incompatible types, possible lossy conversion. So what that's telling me is, okay, this uh, division here, 5.0 over 9.0, is going to result in a double. Fahrenheit, which is an int minus 32, is going to result in an int. If Java sees an int on one side and a double on the other side, it wants to return a double. If Java sees an int on both sides, it's going to return an int. If it sees a double on both sides, it's going to return a double. In any case here, we have an int on the left, a double on the right. It wants to return a double. But what is our data type that we're assigning to? We're assigning to Celsius. So we have a couple options here. Uh, one option is to simply change Celsius from an int to a double. And then run again. And what result do we get? For 4,000 Fahrenheit, we get 2204 Celsius. Let's go ahead and take it back to 40 Fahrenheit, a number that may be more realistic to us. And sure enough, for 40, for 40 Fahrenheit, the Celsius equivalent is 4.44. This now takes care of that issue, and we have a result. But, well, okay, a lot of times we don't tend to think of fractional numbers for temperature. Maybe we do want to show it as a whole number. So this, what I have here works completely fine and is an acceptable answer. But let's change it back to an int, and let's look at another way to fix it. Okay, Alt-Enter to show hints. Uh, split into declar. Okay, well, one second. Um, cast to an int. There's our friend cast again. Uh, lots of other interesting options they give us, but let's try this cast. Okay, now you see what it's doing is it's doing this entire mathematical operation. Then it's taking the result of that operation, casting it to an int data type, a whole number data type, storing it into our variable called Celsius. Let's run the program one more time and see the results. Fahrenheit 40, Celsius 4. So, a little extra work here, and this isn't something that you'll come across every day, but I will tell you when you come across this kind of equation and it keeps coming up to zero, the little subtlety of having 5 divided by 9 as opposed to 5.0 divided by 9.0 makes a whole lot of difference. It doesn't look very different to the naked eye, but uh, a lot of times if you find you're getting a wrong number because you're doing multiplication by zero, it might be that you're dividing an int by an int, and the result of that division is a number that is greater than zero but less than one, and because of that, it's going to cast to a zero. When it's a zero in multiplication, the entire result becomes zero. So just be aware of that if you see something funny. That, that's one of the things where you can stare at it for hours not know what's going on uh, because it's not so obvious. In any case, in this video, we've taken a look at order of operations and also casting and a couple of interesting nuances around casting. Uh, also, how to store a double into an int. Now, if you're going from a, a double to an int, I'm sorry, if you're going from an int to a double, int foo equals um, five, double bar equals foo, there's no need to cast here because we're not losing information. So you only need to cast when going from a double to an int, not when going from an int to a double. Just to make sure, let's go ahead and print this out. And by the way, that's a really good quiz question suggestion. Maybe a multiple choice that has a int, float, uh, double, short, byte, long, and then says which one of these would require a cast. I'm using int here as an example because int is the most common. But, let me put in the system out print line here. But the, the same remains true if you're assigning, uh, say, a byte to a float or a short to a double, no cast required, because you're going from a whole number type to a decimal type. If you go from a decimal type to a whole number type, cast is always required. So I'll go ahead and save. 
play, and we'll see that this will this will execute without issue. Foo equals five, bar equals five point zero. The point zero is an indication that we have a a floating point data type. One other scenario where we have to cast, which again isn't all that common, but it is one to be aware of. If we take a look at our, uh, let's take a look at our whole number types. Just a moment. Okay. We also have a chance of losing data if we go from a large type to a smaller type. So notice that the capacity of a long is a huge number. The capacity of an int is about 2.1 billion, a lot smaller than the capacity of a long. If we take a long data type and we try to store it into an int, we're going to have that cast issue again. The reverse, no problem. We can take a small data type and store it into a larger one. We just can't take a large data type and store it into a smaller one. Let's do a quick experiment with that. Long, uh, I need a new variable. We'll say long bugsy equals 100. Now notice I'm not putting a large number in it, but that's irrelevant. It can hold a large number, and that's all that we need to be concerned about. Okay? Now I'm going to say int cas equals bugsy. And then I'll do a system out print line and say bugsy. And we'll say bugsy. And then we'll say cas. And cas. Okay, notice there's a red line. Even though an int would be very happy to store the value 100, the mere, and see no red line when I do that, the mere fact that we are uh, taking a number Whoops, bugsy, long way bugsy. The mere fact that we're taking a number that is stored in a high capacity variable and putting it into a lower capacity variable means that we have to cast. Let's hold enter one more time and let's do a cast. Okay, and you see with the cast we acknowledge that we might be losing data because we're going from a four byte data type to, I'm sorry, from a four, uh, an eight byte data type to a four byte data type. Let's run now and see what we get. Okay, Bugsy 100, Cas 100, it works as needed, that's fine. We just have to put that cast in to acknowledge that we're going from a large data type to a smaller data type, and that might cause a loss of data. So, uh, we see several different interesting operations here, some casting, uh, a little bit of um, why is my result coming to zero, and also going from a large data type to a smaller data type. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video.